So let me show you a little bit about using the USGS earthquake information. And this is mainly aimed at the students in my lab class. Now they've changed this recently, so you'll notice that the annotated image is not quite the same as what you're going to see when you open it up. It currently looks like this. And at some point in the future, this might change, but this is September 2020. So when you first bring it up, it's going to show your map here, and it will start off with the view of the United States. And it lists the 2.5 plus magnitude earthquakes over the past day. Now, depending on the settings you use, this could be the past day, the past week, or the past month. So that's one day, seven days, or 30 days. When it has a magnitude of so much plus, that means it's all the earthquakes over that magnitude. And you have the option now of listing all of the earthquakes worldwide for that range, or only the earthquakes shown in the map. And so that lets us know that within the United States, there was 19 of them, but worldwide was all 48. Now, before I show you all the controls, let me just go a little bit more over here. It starts out with the newest one first. So the most recent earthquake is going to be listed here on top. This is a real time view of the earthquakes. And so as you're working on the lab, a new earthquake may show up at the top of this list. But for your grading, you will list this first one in one of the questions so I know what data you were looking at. The very first piece of information over here is the magnitude. If I click on a particular earthquake, it opens it up. And again, the M3.4 is telling us that the magnitude 3.4 is there. This earthquake is also highlighted now in blue, so you can see exactly where it is. So the magnitude is listed first, and then it lists the location. Earthquakes rarely happen in a particular town or city, so it will typically tell you how far it is. This one was three kilometers east-southeast of San Leandro, California. It also gives you the specific time and date. So the date comes first with the year, the month, and the day. And then the time. And this is in a special time unit called Universal Coordinated Time. It gives you the latitude and longitude of the precise location of the earthquake and the depth or how far the earthquake was below the surface where the earthquake actually started. And you can pull up this information about any of the earthquakes that are in the listing. Or again, you can click the box to show any of them that's currently on the map. Now, sometimes you'll end up having a cluster of earthquakes. And, and to really see those, sometimes you kind of have to zoom in. So I'm going to kind of move over here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm able to see that on this particular day when I was recording this video, there was a cluster of earthquakes right off the edge of Puerto Rico. And so that is how you would identify a cluster, by zooming in and seeing where you have multiple earthquakes. You can always go back to the whole US by using this zoom control over here. Or if I wanted to see the whole world, I'd use this control. And notice that now all 48 of the current earthquakes are shown on the map. And again, if you zoom in, some of them will be off screen. Now this is how you look at the past day 2.5 earthquakes. And in addition to that, I want to point out that there's differences in the size of the dots. So some of these earthquakes, like this one, is a 3.4 versus a bigger dot on this particular day is a 6.3. So the higher magnitude the earthquake, the bigger the circle is. And so that's more intense earthquake. So sometimes when you zoom in on a cluster, you'll see that some of them were kind of small. But we're still only looking at the 2.5 plus earthquakes. One of the other controls that you guys are going to be using is coming up to this little gear symbol, which is now located on this side. And you've got different controls here. So we started with the one day magnitude 2.5 plus, and it's auto updating. 
And you can then take a look at all magnitudes for one day. 7.5, the ones that are greater than 4.5, the ones that are greater than 2.5, or all magnitudes. Or you can take a look at the 30 days. So depending on the question you're answering in the lab, make sure you know which controls you should be using. We start off with the default, but then it asks you about some other information. And that will allow you to see the various situations that you're going to be asked about and then draw some conclusions from that. And again, because these earthquakes are being updated, it's really important that you fill in the date and the time that you started the lab and what earthquake is at the top of your lab so that when I go back to grade you, I can look at the longer time span and figure out which earthquake should have been visible on your screen to know if you were selecting the right ones for the questions in your particular lab. If you have any questions, please ask me and I will let you know what you need to do for the lab class.